Here is another fuel question. A 10 litre tank of butane is stored at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 500 kPa. Determine the maximum amount of energy that can be produced by the tank. So let's think about this question. In here, there is no reference to how much energy can be produced by butane. But we know that in our data booklet, there is some values for that. In the data booklet, you are given energy per gram and energy per mole. So that means I either need to know the mass of butane or the moles of butane to work out the energy that can be released. Because butane's a gas, I'm gonna use my, um, my gas equation to find the number of moles. And that's how we start this question. So down below here, you can see we need number of moles of butane equals the pressure times volume divided by our gas constant times our temperature. So when we do that, we find the number of moles is 1.986. And then I use the data booklet value for molar heat of combustion to work out my energy. But the main thing with this question is knowing what is in your data booklet. And if you can understand or know that I need to use my data booklet for energy calculations and the fact that there is energy content listed in the data booklet, that is how you start a question like this. You look at your data booklet and go, right, energy content of butane is this per mole I need to find my number of moles of butane. So this is a pretty stock standard question in terms of finding out how much energy can be produced from a fuel. Um, the main thing here is knowing that you need to find the number of moles to begin with. The final trick here is the fact that they've asked you to express this energy content in megajoules. So what that means is you need to realize in your data booklet, it's kilojoules per mole is the value that's given. So therefore, when you do your calculation, you're gonna work out how many kilojoules you have. To go from kilojoules into megajoules is just a factor of a thousand. So therefore, you divide by a thousand to get to your megajoules. In energy and in chemistry, you're going to need to know your, um, was it your units basically going from um, either joules to kilojoules to megajoules um, or milligrams to grams to kilograms to tons. So you need to know this prefix or which is called mega and that means a million and it's a thousand times bigger than what kilo is. So knowing that is important.